Tripoli's renewed calls for international experts to visit the country to assess the scale of violence against civilians. The Libyan government insists the claims of the opposition that over 10,000 have died since the beginning of the clashes are exaggerated. Sukhat Chandan's just returned from Libya. He was part of the uh, first international group to be invited to examine the civilian losses in the conflict. He's on the line from London now to talk about what he saw there. Thank you for coming on to RT. What impressions and evidence did you bring back with you then? I think one of the most important things to say on our delegation is that um, the, the basis for 1973, the UN resolution, was that the claim was that Gaddafi had bombed from the air three particular districts in Tripoli, Sabjuma, Fajlun, and Tajura. We visited these places. There was no indication whatsoever of any aerial bombardments. So. It, go, it, just, it just goes to show that if there's a claim, this has to be actually corroborated properly, and that hasn't been done. And what we've, what we've had is a situation where NATO has gone to war against a sovereign nation on the base of an allegation, which in terms of our findings was just baseless. OK, right, I'm taking what you say there, but of course you were invited across by the, uh, G the Gaddafi regime, the uh, Libyan government. It begs the question, were you shown the whole picture? Did you see really everything that was going on? Are you absolutely convinced that you did? Well, you know, you're obviously right to, uh, um, to, 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 to say that. But the point is that there has been no international investigative teams so far to investigate the NATO bombings as well. And so we were part of that mission. And so, I mean, we've just returned, I've just literally returned from the airport. I've come straight into the studio here in London. And the British response to our delegation is our head delegate is currently in Heathrow police custody suite being questioned. Being so questioned this why? is the response about what? of the British authorities. What's, it, what's he being well, questioned about? Can you tell us? Well, I don't know. I, I returned I, I return with him uh, to, to, to the airport. We passed passport control and he was taken uh, straight away by, by the police. And now me and my colleagues are trying to find out He's incommunicado. We, okay. we, we assume he's in Heathrow custody suite. So this is, this is, okay. the, this is the British response to a peace initiative. We, we, we went there to meet the uh, Archbishop of Libya, the, the Vatican's uh, uh, um, uh, uh, envoy there. And it's, it's these type of meetings that, we, that, that was taking place. And, can, can, you, can you just tell our viewers who went across with you, who was also part of your group? What sort of people went across? It was, it was a mixture of professionals, um, doctors, uh, independent journalists. Um, so it was, it was, it was a cross-section of people, English, people from different backgrounds. But all of us were, were, were actually British nationals. OK. Um, your group also reports that you have been able to corroborate that there were civilian fatalities because of NATO bombings. Now, again, crucially important here. Tell us more about that. How have you been able to corroborate that? Well, you know, speaking to uh, these British journalists in Tripoli was very interesting. They've been there for over two months. They've only been able to corroborate one civilian casualty um, from the NATO uh, bombing. We, in the matter of one morning, managed to go to hospitals, see death certificates, see hospital records, visited families, saw, saw death certificates in their possession, had testimonials from families, and we corroborated the possibility of seven civilian deaths within, that, within the matter of three hours. So really, if people are very serious about understanding what the situation is going on in Libya, they need to go there. Professional teams need to be sent. And this, this has been called for by the Gaddafi regime and by a, a, a different countries of the global south. There is an opinion indeed, uh, you know, it, it, it's uh, been reported as well by our, our correspondent there, Paul Islia, that, you know, maybe on the ground, Gaddafi's been using bodies of civilians killed in his offensive to uh, prove damage made by the coalition attacks, that basically people were, were not killed by NATO. You know, how can you prove it, though? Well, this is, this is, this is obviously the challenge. You know, this, this, this aggression has to stop. There needs to be international mediation. There needs to be immediate ceasefire. There needs to be reconciliation. And fundamentally, NATO has to stop its, 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 its aggression. I mean, the British journalists were very interesting. They accused us of being naive in Tripoli. Well, they said they had free access to Benghazi. Why didn't the British journalists investigate the mass lynchings of dark, black-skinned Libyans all across eastern, eastern Libya? You know, what is wrong with these journalists? They can go to YouTube. They can see literally black people being chopped up alive, literally on YouTube, in Benghazi and in the rebel-held areas. Why haven't the British journalists investigated this? And just to clarify, chopped up by whom? By the rebels, by the pro-NATO Contras, as I call them. 
Okay, well, uh, Sukhet Chandran from the British Civilians for Peace in Libya, thank you for being on the programme and telling us what you saw.